Welcome to the Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. I'm Jay Nicholas. We're going to do another in our series of saltwater fly tying and fly fishing videos. All right, this is another in our series of saltwater flies, Pacific salmon and cutthroat and rockfish flies, saltwater flies. We're tying uh, another fly that's an adaptation of the surf candy family. Um, developed on the, the East Coast um, and I'm tying this one with um, this is a fish scale material, it's a synthetic material I'm going to make it a little bit longer and this is this is a fly that I've used for black rockfish and coho salmon in the ocean, the near shore ocean off of Oregon Again, it's one of these flies that uh, some people say, oh yeah, surf candy, easy to tie. But anything you start from scratch, I'm using a fine uh, mono thread, monofilament, and when you, uh, when you treat it with uh, clear cure goo, it will disappear as it would. Now this, this fly um, is fished on the retrieve with cast and strip. And th this synthetic material, um, gosh, a person could use bucktail. This has, uh, I would say it's, it's a crystal flash-like material blended into it. I like to trim to length before I attach it. This, this is a, a, a white underbody. And I'm just doing loose spiral wraps. Well, they're not loose, but they're not placed exactly together. An olive lateral area and then a purple. And th this material, you have to be a little bit... Uh, I've, I've been not quite careful enough with this. It will get tangled and you have to spend a little bit of time getting it untangled. When you clip a section out right from where it's uh, gathered in a zip tie, you have to pull it out kind of slowly so it doesn't get all snagged up. And the, the more care you take with it as you go along, the better it will treat you. A lot of our bait fish um, are... Um, will we'll have uh, olive hues in them, sand lance especially, uh, backs that are blue or purple uh, or kind of peacock green. Um, it, it is not clear in my mind that the exact color is the key, but it's something that people develop very strong opinions about and as should you, so that when you go fishing, you have confidence in your flies. But whether it's the blue back with the olive side, or whether it is the, the purple back with the chartreuse. Now, now what I'm doing here is just, I'm kind of straightening, flattening that out. Um, black over white is a very effective color combination. Um, sh incorporating chartreuse into these flies is very effective. There's almost always uh, a combination of dark back and light belly that you want that you want to use that something along those lines. Um, so I use some Kirgu Hydro to firm that up. That sinks in and that's nice and solid now. I'm going to add adhesive holographic eyes. There's a hole. And by the way, I had trouble with these eyes initially. When I'd go to peel them off, the paper would come with them, and I was at my wit's end. And then I just eventually learned take my thumbnail, bend the paper a little bit, slide my thumbnail under there, and that will usually get them right off. 
if your thumbnails are not long enough you might use the ed uh, the uh, needle or your bodkin so there are my eyes and I'm gonna start out with just a little bit of the uh, cure group cure goo this is tack free and my eyes aren't quite evenly aligned there so I can um, since I just have a tiny bit it's it's not going to run so I can turn the fly over now whether you are a tire who will put all your goo on initially and then cure it or whether you'll put on just a tiny bit to start come on micro brush and then add in layers you will decide what's right for you I sometimes I get it just right and I can get a lot of it on sometimes I wind up having to uh, so my eyes aren't you can see my eyes aren't quite right the fish will I think forgive me now I'm going to add a little bit of bulk to that body these flies make a if you look at uh, I've, I've had the opportunity to look at a, a I don't even know what all the different kinds of fish fry are. Oops, I got a drip. So I'm going to move that along there. I'm going to put the material back over there and I'm going to rotate a little bit. Now, if that was e five minute epoxy, it would be getting firmer and firmer. But I can, I've got that rotating and I get my micro brush aside. And that looks pretty even. Um, the, these fish fry that float around in the ocean and float around in the estuaries, it's fascinating to see them. I don't know what the different kinds are. Most of them are clear-ish. Um, most of them are not as brightly colored as our flies. But I like to use these flies. Uh, they get the fish's attention. Uh, they really work. So. Do I want that any thicker? I don't think I do. But again, so I'm I'm going to extend. So so right now the the firmness go, ends about at the hook shank. I'm going to add some goo onto the base and let that see what's happening is it's sinking in to the fibers. And what this will do, uh, so hook fouling is something that everybody who casts flies uh, thinks about. And hook fouling is, is when your tailing material or your winging material gets um, fouled, wrapped around the hook shank. Uh, that's not something we aspire to have happen. It doesn't look very good. Um, the uh, the thought is that a fish will not take a fouled hook, a fouled fly. And I think depending on what the fly is and the mood of the fish, that's true. I think there are also situations where fouling is not as egregious a condition as one would think it might be. Um, hook fouling, there are techniques like this for reducing the incidence of hook fouling. Your casting is a factor. The wind is a factor. The stiffness of your leader is a factor. So if you're a good caster, and you have a firm leader and it's not very windy, it won't foul as much. So this this fly is probably not going to foul. It's firm clear back to here. Um, really nice, transparent, 
dark back, light body, beating little eyes, um, great surf candy adaptation for the Pacific, cutthroat, black rockfish, coho salmon. Tie up a bunch, have fun.